So in this segment, we're going to discuss Suella Braveman getting absolutely lit up over her immigration rhetoric. Um, and this is this is a fatality right here. She had a very rough week. Um, and we're going to cover both both those kind of clips. And it was glorious to see it. You love to see it. In boat crossings in the past year, you say there are 100 million people displaced around the world and likely billions more eager to come here if possible. On what planet is that likely? And how is that not inflammatory language? Good morning. I kind of wish that um, they said this to Nigel Farage when he talked about all of, you know, kind of Romanians and Bulgarians coming here during the EU referendum, but I'm glad someone's asking the good questions. Good morning. Thank you very much for the invitation to join you this morning. Uh, there are potentially 100 million people around the world who are currently displaced. That's an estimate provided for by the UN. So she's like, oh, you know, the UN said this, not me. But point being is that just because you have, you know, this amount of displaced people does not mean they want to come here. And does that mean they have the facilities to come here? That's the key difference. They might want to go to a different country or you know, they might want to stay where they are or go to a neighbouring country. So when the incident is over, say, for example, if it's an earthquake or um, some sort of uh, military conflict, once it's over, they might be happy to go back. They might be in a neighbouring country. Um, uh, that's people who are being displaced because of conflict, persecution, uh, environmental factors, people who are on the move. Many of them are heading to the United Kingdom. We saw over 45,000 people come here on small boats alone last year. This is an un... So one year, she's talked about, what, 100 million displaced people, and then you talk about 40,000 coming here last year. 100 million versus 40,000. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Sustainable level of a problem that we've got, and okay. it's now Sorry, necessary just, for us to take okay. steps so to there stop are, it. So there are 100 million displaced people worldwide, that is true. Only a quarter of them have left their own country. So even the 100 million figure doesn't hold up, let alone the billions that you have flagged in the Daily Mail this morning. So you're talking about 25 uh, million people, I think, that have been like displaced and have left their country. I think we can... Look, look at, uh, we can argue about the numbers of the millions of people around the world who it's would like to argument. come in I'm the sorry, United Kingdom. I'm sorry, it's not an argument. Only 26 million have even left their own country. And 45,000 we're, we're in boats coming over to the UK. Yes, so, and yes, that is what we're a very dealing with here number. is tens there you of go. thousands. So you're talking, you've gone from 100 million to saying, oh, 100 million people could come here to 40,000 people coming here. And now she's going, that's a very high number. She's moved the goalpost completely. Isn't it? What, what we're dealing with is an unsustainably high number. We take less per capita. We have taken less refugees per capita than other countries. Um, so that's that's nonsense. I think we're the lowest, one of the lowest, I think, amongst the G20. This is absolute nonsense. Tens On any of count thousands. of people coming here illegally, not just in the last year, but actually over the last few years, since 2018, 85,000 people came here on small boats. If you're suggesting to me that that... So we had 40,000 last year and you had 80,000 since 2018. So that's not a lot. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's not a lot that's an appropriate and acceptable level, then I would respectfully disagree with you. I am not I don't disputing think it is. that I, it's an ethical issue whether, whether you think it's acceptable or not, but it is a fact that we are dealing with tens of thousands. What's bro looking at? Is he having, like, what's, what's going on here? Is he, te is he looking at getting an ice cream or something? What's going on? And you have used the word billions. And I think that you people want you to explain the justification for the use of the word billions when it is a fact that there's only tens of thousands have made their way here on the boats. I'll tell you what the real world impact on your viewers is. There you go, boom, she's, she's trying to shift the conversation. I'll tell you what the real world impact of the viewers are. Can you, can you tell us, right, if 100 million people tried to come here, how would that even work? What are the logistics of that? You know, it's just absolute nonsense. Susanna Reid here has played a masterclass, just like the person on the Conservative... Um, the select committee where he asked about how would a person from any war-torn country, apart from, I think it was um, Afghanistan and Ukraine, and then they threw in Hong Kong as well, how would someone from those three uh, places, except those three places, get refuge in the UK? And she had no answer. I remember covering that. It was glorious. Uh, it's 
45,000 people who have arrived here illegally last year in small boats, sometimes coming here on a fatal journey, tragically. It's so she kind of changed her tone a bit here, you know, kind of feign empathy here, um, which is uh, fine, whatever, you do you. And, but she's saying, let me explain how it impacts your vote uh, to the constituents, people in the UK. And now she's shifted it to people who have died um, during the Channel Crossing, where if you really cared about these people, what you would do is set up a processing centre in France, but also set up safe and legal points of entry for people seeking refuge in the UK. Let's not forget here, the majority, I think, of the people making the Channel Crossings are from Afghanistan. Those are people we promised refuge to, and they were told, look, if you can get here by any means, you will get refuge here. Well, this is what you wanted, right? They are trying to get here by any means, and they're trying to seek refuge here. The only problem is you guys weren't smart enough to set up a, way, a safe way for them to actually get here. They can't get on a plane because they're not been given, um, you know, kind of asylum seeker status within the UK. The only way you can do that is by physically getting to the UK. There were other things you could have done via embassies and other things, but no, you guys didn't want to do it. You know, it's a classic bit of, oh yeah, just get here and we'll sort everything out. How do you get here? Don't, you know, nonsense. £6 million a day being spent on hotel accommodation in cities and towns around the United Kingdom. That's because you didn't set up the the, um, the centres properly. You haven't dealt with the backlog, first of all, because I reckon you've cut home office staff. I'll be real. Um, through austerity, that's probably what you've done, let's be honest now. So you haven't dealt with the backlog, and that's the key issue. That's one of the reasons why these hotels have to be used. Um, so it's just ridiculous. This is a mess that you guys helped to create. Without the Dublin 3 agreement, you further incentivize people to make channel crossings uh, across the channel to come here because they know there's no way for us to send them back. And the fact that we are dealing with asylum claims quicker in the UK rather than France because France has a lot more people to deal with. So this is a mess that you guys have helped to make and now you're fundamentally trying to deflect the issue here. It's uh, 100,000 cases waiting for a decision uh, in our system, during which time we have to accommodate and support people at huge cost to the taxpayers. So if you set up dedicated facilities, we wouldn't be in this mess, would we? If you actually had the staff to deal with this stuff, we wouldn't be in this mess, would we? But, you know, this, this person, she's just, she's a joke, an absolute joke. Um, pretty Patel on roids, that's what she is. And now we go on to uh, an email that was written and sent in error, blaming kind of the civil servants. And now she's had to rail back saying, oh, it wasn't me who wrote um, that um, email. Absolutely embarrassing. Or, or the Conservative Party's email to Tory members in your name says that activist civil servants blocked action to stop the small boats. Did they? I think you're referring to an email that was sent out yesterday in your name uh, by the Conservative Party. Yeah. It had her sign on it. It had digital signature. So she's arguing. What she argues is really bad. I, I yeah, I, with respect, I didn't. I didn't write that email. I didn't see it, uh, and it was an error. So you're telling me someone in the Home Office or in CCHQ, wherever, has your digital signature, right? Which I guess wouldn't be the hardest thing to get. Has sent off an email and without your consent and your knowledge and hasn't been fired yet you haven't found this person you don't know who it was um hmm i don't know that that sounds a bit dodgy mate i'll be honest i remember door tried to use a similar argument when he uh, was caught you know kind of not using uh you know kind of def uh, lying around the information he used around vaccines then tried to blame an unknown producer so yeah i don't know chief really that uh, do you agree with that do you my, agree with name? the sentiment that activist civil servants blocked the work you wanted to do on this? Listen, I, I've been working with um, hundreds of civil servants since I've been Home Secretary and even prior to that, and I've been uh, incredibly impressed by the dedication. This is nonsense, because I think it was her and Priti Patel that actually blamed civil servants for blocking plans like sending um, refugees to Ascension Island and other places. Um, so this this is absolute nonsense, what she's saying here. Um, you know, the civil servants union have sent her a letter asking for an apology. I don't think she's actually given an apology um and so this is nonsense she doesn't apologize for the content she says oh civil servants are hard working and all this other kind of nonsense um just a deflection merchant a bad one at that and then you've got dan hodges who writes for i think it's the daily mail saying um you know returning to yesterday's advert about modern slavery given traffickers are now aware their victims have effectively been told by the uk government they cannot approach the authorities why does that not make the uk a more likely target for these criminals because you've got to imagine right if you're one of these traffickers and you know someone said uh, you think someone 
someone's going to run away and talk to the police and try and get you arrested, you can say, well, under the law, you're actually not protected. So if you go and go to the police, you'll be deported. How does that, that make any sense? You're treating victims as if they've committed crimes. Victims of trafficking. Um, this is this is just this government are just so bad. Even right wingers are calling them out. That's how toxic it's gotten. The culture war that they're kind of cannibalizing each other at this point because they genuinely have no clue what to do. Um, this is this is painful. This is painful, people. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.